This is the Bison Football Show with Coach Matt Entz, hosted by Jeremy Jorgensen and presented by Gate City Bank. Nichols is coming to the Dome. The Bison will face the back-to-back -back Southland Conference champions this week in the FCS playoffs in the second round this Saturday at 2.30 Central. Nichols dismantled UND in the Thanksgiving round this past weekend. Joining me on set is head coach Matt Entz. And coach, uh, first of all, happy Thanksgiving. I uh, hope you and uh, yours enjoyed the holidays. And how did the players uh, make it back through this snowstorm? Well, I, I did in enjoy the couple days off we had. Uh, our players all had Thursday, Friday off. And uh, we were fortunate the majority of them started their travels back to Fargo on Friday. Uh, we, we did have a couple issues with flights yesterday. Uh, a few of our players got back late. But uh, all but two players were at practice yesterday. Was it a good mental break for the guys, do you think, having a bye week? Oh, definitely. I think any time they can step away from, from the coaches, get away from classwork, get away from uh, the lifting, the, the, the schedule, and recharge their batteries, not just physically but mentally. Uh, and I thought you could see it last night in our, in our late evening practice. Let's take a look at the opponent. And uh, Nichols played UND this past weekend. They beat them 24 to 6. Rush yards were 316 to 44 on our NODAC insurance scoreboard. The third down conversions were a big story. Uh, Nichols only got two of them, uh, but they did rush the ball really well to overcome that third down conversion rate. Let's hear what their head coach had to say after they beat UND. We met on Thanksgiving morning, had a good practice, good team meal, gave them off to get away for a little bit. But I thought those guys doing it for the third year in a row, uh, really, really, that, it's a maturity level thing. I thought they did a good job. And also taking some of the young guys who hadn't been here, and hey, this is how we do things, and it paid off. You can talk about the things we did, but it's good players. You get yourself some good players. Uh, they believe in what you're doing. They believe in each other. Uh, and then they kind of take it over and they run with it. Listen, this is what you play for to advance uh, week in. Uh, week out, we, you want to be able to do that, and look, we'll, we'll give it our best shot and go up there, and I know our guys will be prepared and be ready to go. Well, Coach, your initial thoughts on uh, Nichols coming to the Fargo Dome? Well, I was extremely impressed with the run game yesterday, yeah. and uh, uh, very efficient, and I know they were only two and nine on third down, but they weren't in third down a whole lot during the course of the game, and uh, you know, the running back, uh, uh, Gum, runs real hard, yeah. uh, 4K, the quarterback uh, has a little moxie to him, uh, get out of the pocket, uh, make you pay with his feet as well and then uh, they got some skill kids that'll go up and get it especially the 50 50 balls yeah no doubt about it uh, let's take a look at some uh, highlights of their season you know it wasn't always rosy for the back-to-back -back Southland champs they lost to Sam Houston in this game right here 17 nothing they lost at home to Abilene Christian they lost two FBS games but there were parts where they got on a roll, wasn't their coach this year? Well, there, there was, and you can see that late in the year, they had a huge win their last regular season game uh, that secured the, the conference championship, and, 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 and they needed to come from behind to win that game. And so uh, they're, they're playing very confidently right now, and we're going to have to have a great week of practice to, to be able to, to compete with this team. You know, one of the offensive guys to watch is Julian Gums. You mentioned him. He's number 28. He's a running back. They use him in the passing game here a little bit as well. He's a talented player. He is. Uh, yesterday in the game, big physical back, uh, breaking tackles, was okay, very guys, seldom tackled behind the line of scrimmage. So uh, we're going to have to really wrap up and do a great job of tackling uh, this next week. You see their quarterback. He's number nine, Chase Forcade, 67% completion rate. 16 to 10 touchdowns interceptions so he does turn the ball over a little bit rushed it for 607 this year what's your opinion of uh, chase 4k their quarterback he's a veteran player as well he is I, I think he does a great job of extending plays uh, there's some quarterback run game that needs to operate through him and then the the, the, the utilization of the rpos uh, makes him kind of a dual threat on every snap and we're gonna have to do a great job of keeping him in the pocket and hopefully we can talk him into throwing a couple of those interceptions well they had some ups and downs defensively throughout the year but they do have one now outstanding individual player a couple of others as well but Sully Lesh is one guy to watch he's the active sack leader in the FCS career-wise 36 and a half sacks 61 uh, TFLs he was a big impact in the, the win over North Dakota and he's a a nice solid defensive tackle isn't he outstanding player has great energy uh, plays you know almost a majority of snaps for him uh, you, you, yesterday you saw him make a big play uh, when UND was backed up and, and that fumble that it was right down there on the two-yard line. I think he was involved in it. Yep. So uh, he's a young man. We're going to have to make sure where he's accounted for uh, each snap. Yep, Southland Conference Defensive Player of the Year. As a, as a defensive guy, what do you see from them defensively scheme-wise? Well, they, they've kind of evolved a little bit. Early in the year, they, they were an odd front against Kansas State, a uh, big quarters team. And since then, they've kind of got into more... Uh, under cover one, uh, playing a lot of man, but 
Uh, you saw yesterday they got some long athletic DBs, uh, especially at the corner position. Uh, we're going to have to do a great job of getting releases, getting open, uh, double moves from guys, trying to find ways to uh, be creative in our pass game. Well, you mentioned Kansas State. They played Kansas State in the first game, of course. That was uh, Chris Kleiman's first game as the head coach at Kansas State, and Kansas State took it to them. Uh, they did play two FBS games this year as we look at the highlights from the K-State game, kind of the lowlights, I guess. K-State really took it to them, but they played Texas State as well. Um, and in those two FBS games, they gave up 573 and 362, which probably skewed their overall season offensive stats or defensive stats a little bit. But what did you make of their Kansas State game? It was a long time ago. It was. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to take a look at it uh, and, and use it. Like I said, uh, you know, on defense, they were in quarters more most of the day. Kind of played an odd front, uh, which was unique to them, or the only time they've done it all year. So I don't know if they did it to kind of shock value against Kansas State. I yep. thought they needed to change things up. But... Uh, you know, Kansas State was, was effective on the ground and had some big explosive plays during the course of the game. You know, so two FBS games, so they did only lose to two FCS teams, and it was a two-game stretch there right in the middle of the season. Uh, do you talk to the K-State coaches at all about this game, or is it too far removed for them to even remember it, probably? Well, I've talked a little bit to, with uh, Coach Kleiman already uh, mm -hmm. when we saw the Brenton matchups, just trying to get as much information as we could. Uh, we'll continue to try to uh, find out as much as we can about this team as the week progresses, but uh, you know, that's, that's three months ago now, yeah. and so uh, we're probably going to take more of the, the games later in the year when we start trying to really break them down. You know, they were a minus seven in their four losses turnover margins, so when they turn it over, they really struggle. I guess that's the case for everybody, but let's take a look at the team profile. They're nine and four, two FBS, two FCS losses. The FCS losses were back-to-back. You look at some of their stats, uh, what sticks out? I guess scoring margin is 29-26, so they're giving up a few points, but the turnover margin for the season, minus four, but that's mostly from the four losses. Yep. You know, the other thing that I noticed is just the, the rushing yards, 198. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a solid number, and a lot of schools in the country would love to have those numbers, but uh, we're going to have to do a great job stopping the run and then just trying to minimize the, the explosive plays. Uh, they got some big-time receivers that they'll throw it up to. Yeah, no doubt about that. Uh, you look at their coach, uh, Tim Rebo is his name, and uh, he's done a nice job. Uh, the program was losing when he got there five seasons ago. Three straight playoff appearances. He's 26 and 12 in his last three seasons. He's doing something right, isn't he? He is. He is. And, and his comment there uh, that you saw earlier just about finding good players. And uh, it, a lot of times that's what it takes to get a program turned around and guys who believe in what they're doing. And you can see that by the energy at which their team plays. Is those guys believe in the scheme. They believe in the system. And uh, it's going to be a tough game come Saturday. So three straight years they were on Thanksgiving. They lost to South Dakota. Last year they, they beat San Diego, lost at Eastern Washington in the second round. Uh, but this is a team that's been in the playoffs quite a bit, so experience does matter a little bit, and uh, they probably won't be deer in the headlights. Oh, I definitely you know think experience matters. Those guys are used to traveling. Uh, you know they, They've made long trips before. Yeah. When you talk about going out to Eastern Washington, um, you know, and, and there's always going to be a challenge. They're going to come in and play extremely hard. Yeah. Uh, we understand that, but I know just from last night, our kids are excited to get going in, in, in the second season, uh, and, and we understand that uh, you, you got to get hot and stay hot during this time of year, and it's, it's one and done, so every week's a, a microcosm of a season in itself. Do you feel like uh, good about your team going in uh, with the bye week now and kind of reboot a little bit and refocus uh, as the playoffs are different than the regular season? Uh, definitely. You know, I thought we had a couple of real good practices last week. Uh, we were able to spend a little time on, on both potential opponents, uh, which is always nice that you can get ahead. Last night we had an excellent practice, and I think we'll have some guys who use the, the break to, to get healthy physically and mentally, and so I hope you see a couple new faces back out there that can help us uh, get a big W next Saturday. Scout team becomes big this time of year to give you a good look because Nichols is a team that we just haven't seen a lot of. So those guys need to be prepared and give the, the ones a good look, right? Oh, of course. And that, yeah. that's every week. But our yeah. scout team's done an outstanding job. And, and Luke Olson and Ben Klinger do a great job of, of orchestrating those two areas. Well, best of luck to you and the guys. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch the playoffs. And uh, we're going to let you go here. We're going to talk about the bracket. Jeff Colhane and I coming up. Uh, but first, before we get to that, uh, let's get to know Dylan Radons a little bit. This is Would You Rather with the 2019 Bison, presented by Gate City Bank. Would you rather go fishing or hunting? Uh, fishing for sure. Uh, yeah. Would you rather go skydiving or cliff diving? Skydiving. Would you rather go camping or stay in a hotel? Stay in a hotel for sure. <laughs> Would you rather shovel snow or swap mosquitoes? Shovel snow all day. <laughs> Would you rather swim in a pool or a lake? Uh, lake. 
How about would you rather drive or fly? Fly for sure, that's always fun. Would you rather walk 10 miles or go to the dentist? Go to the dentist, <laughs> I like clean teeth, so. Would you rather bite your tongue while eating or step on a Lego? Oof, step on a Lego, yeah, for sure. Would you rather sit on a beach or a cruise ship? Uh, oh gosh, I'm not, beach for sure, beach. Okay. Would you rather confront an alligator or a bear? Oh my goodness. Alligator, I feel like I'd get away from an alligator better. <laughs> Would you rather be thirsty or hungry? Uh, thirsty, thirsty. Would you rather sit in a tractor or an office? Oh boy, a tractor probably, yeah, definitely. Would you rather watch a movie at home or go to a theater? Uh, go to a theater for sure. Would you rather drink coffee or juice in the morning? Uh, coffee, definitely coffee. Would you rather own a fancy house or a fancy vehicle? Fancy vehicle, big vehicle guy. And welcome back to the show. We welcome to the set Jeff Colhane, the radio voice of the North Dakota State Bison. We let Coach go. He's got to start preparing for Nichols and start watching some films. So we're going to start to break down the bracket a little bit. So appreciate you joining the show today. Great to be here. By the way, did a great job with these chairs. Yeah. Very comfortable. Yeah, they're Gates, nice, aren't they? Gate little, City Bank. Little Thank elbow you. room? Little elbow room. I like it. <laughs> really good. Exactly. First, we're going to talk about the attendance on Thanksgiving weekend. It's the first round of the FCS bracket. And the attendance wasn't great. Uh, if you look at the numbers uh, out there, Nichols had the best crowd at 7,500. Uh, some of the numbers were tough with weather. I know Austin P fought the weather. They had weather delays, still had 3,500, but these are very low numbers. And then when you start to compare them year by year, so 28,000, if you go the last four years, and I think there's a difference in some of the years as well when you look at it, because some of the Montana schools are on Thanksgiving. If they are, then the number goes way up because they draw very well no matter what weekend it is. But overall, Pretty low numbers, Jeff, I think. And is it something maybe that uh, the NCAA needs to take a look at as far as the size of the bracket in this first weekend? Yeah, I, I think so, Jeremy. And, and, you know, a couple of things here. Thanksgiving's tough. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's tough for everyone. You've got students that aren't around. You've got people traveling. You talked about some of the weather issues as well. You know, and I think from a standpoint of what are college football fans thinking about this past weekend? It's perhaps the biggest weekend in the country for the Power Five and the FBS. Rivalry weekend, the Iron Bowl, the game, Michigan, Ohio State. So in some of these areas, potentially, if you're thinking about going to a game, it, it might yeah. not be this Thanksgiving weekend playoff game. And so uh, it, it's challenging. It's tough. Yeah. I guess you have to look at it from the NCAA's perspective. What is the goal at the end of the day with this bracket and with this weekend? And uh, from an attendance standpoint, it was tough. It wasn't very successful, that's for sure. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, it was lower than past years, for sure. Let's start to take a look at the bracket here. We look at, uh, obviously, Nichols beat North Dakota. We've talked about that, 24-6, to 6, so they come to Fargo. Um, the other part of that pod up there is Illinois State. Very impressive. I thought James Robinson was a workhorse. 41 carries, almost 300 yards. Their defense locked in. That's a nice win for Brock Spack. Well, I'll tell you what. It might be the surprise of the bracket. Not from a standpoint of Illinois State not being capable, but yeah. Southeast Missouri State hosting and understanding that Illinois State doesn't have a quarterback. Brady right. Davis is out, and, and the Redbirds basically said, you know what? We're going to scrap it, and we know who our best player is. It's James Robinson. Mm -hmm. And we're going to hand it to him, and we're going to hand it to him, and we're going to keep doing it until yeah. you stop us. And they didn't stop him. No. A Valley record, 41 carries, nearly 300 yards of rushing, uh, rushing yardage for James Robinson. And Illinois State basically went to Seymour and said, here's what we're going to do, stop us. And their offensive line was fantastic as well. Yeah, pretty good spot for Illinois State going to Central yep. Arkansas. Now moving along, uh, these games feed Montana State and Sacramento State. And, and Albany uh, pulled away late. Uh, kind of an unimpressive first half by Jeff Undercuffler, their freshman quarterback. But they did get it going. Now they have to go to Bozeman. And Austin P. Uh, I thought, really dominated Furman, who was, uh, you know, was questionable whether they should have been in the bracket. Yep. Maybe that's a spot where Southern Illinois sure. should have been. Uh, but what do you think of those two games? Well, a, a name for Bison fans to remember here over the next couple of years because he'll be in the Fargo Dome mm -hmm. in two seasons is Jeff Undercuffler. <laughs> he is their record-setting freshman quarterback. Got it going late in this game. Six touchdown passes against Central Connecticut State. He's going to be a name that potentially we talk about for the Jerry Rice Award. We all think Trey Lance should win it, mm -hmm. but you know how these things go. Jeff Undercuffler's name will be brought up 
for the Jerry Rice Award, there's no doubt. And congratulations to Mark Hudspeth and Austin P. Yeah. It's their first ever playoff appearance, first ever win. Now they go to Sacramento State. An interesting storyline there. Two first-time yeah. playoff teams playing one another. You know, Austin P is a capable team, and uh, certainly Albany uh, going out to yeah. Montana State. That's a tough spot. Montana yeah. State's playing well, coming off a bye. Tough spot in Bozeman uh, for the Great Danes right there. But moving along to the bottom half of the bracket now, and these games feed uh, Weber State and, and Montana, two more Big Sky teams that got seeded. Kennesaw State does get the win. Yeah. A lot of people were, you know, questioning whether they should have been in the bracket or not. You know, low strength of schedule, but they do go on the road and beat Wofford. That was a close game. And this game, uh, you know, I thought this game between Southeast Louisiana and Villanova would be low scoring. It was not <laughs> low scoring. But uh, I'm not surprised it was a close game. Those are two pretty equally matched teams. Two really good teams. A couple of teams, things here. Kennesaw State, both in this game, both teams went to backup quarterbacks. Their starters got hurt. Kennesaw State's backup ran for over 200 yards in this game. They find a way to win on the road at Wofford. Uh, congratulations to the Owls. And 1,103 <laughs> yards combined total offense between Southeastern Louisiana and Villanova, Jeremy. And what is it with missing PATs late down at uh, Strawberry yeah. Stadium in Hammond? As Villanova misses a PAT with three minutes left, the, uh, the southeastern Louisiana, the Lions get a score, and then yeah. a controversial offensive yeah. PI penalty on Villanova on a touchdown. It was, it was a wild finish down in Hammond, Louisiana. Yeah, no doubt. Kennesaw State in a real tough spot going out to Ogden yeah. for sure. Uh, southeast Louisiana might give the Grizz some problems in Missoula, but the bottom half here, you look at uh, northern Iowa. That game was closer than expected. Yes. They pulled away late. Uh, San Diego's a well-coached, disciplined team, and they played hard. And Monmouth beating Holy Cross, uh, certainly no surprise there. Well, you and I has got some issues on offense right now because Isaiah Weston, their star wide receiver, is not healthy. He did play. They're struggling to score the football. Their defense came up big with a pick six, Bronte Wells, and a big turnover late. And Monmouth Holy Cross, congratulations to Monmouth. But it's the grave digger game for them going to Harrisonburg. They're already oh. digging that hole uh, oh, for man. the Hawks. It's going to be a tough weekend in the second round at uh, Bridgeport Stadium. Yeah, Northern Iowa SDSU, uh, that might be one of the, the better matchups yeah. of the second round here. Sadly, regionalization hit those two yeah. teams in the Valley. They played a few weeks ago. That could be a low-scoring defensive battle in cold weather in Brookings next weekend. Which young quarterback and offense makes a play first could win? Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, you can catch uh, Jeff and I on the radio during the week, 11 to 1 on the Insiders on Bison 1660. We'll certainly be breaking down the bracket uh, all week and breaking down these games. It was a lot of fun having you here. And Thank you. We'll look forward to this week. Uh, the Bison are in the playoffs. It's a lot of fun. Still to come on the show, the Most Art Twins. We're going to take a look back at that story. It's a, it's a good one. They have some fun with telling each other apart. You'll want to see it. Stay with us. Welcome back. Well, the Bison have had lots of brothers on the roster. Right now, the Kubus boys out of Dickinson are here, but identical twins, that's a new one. The most starts have a dry sense of humor, which only adds to the fun of trying to tell them apart. Today's Bison football feature story is presented by Olaf Anderson Construction. The Bison football team is a family, and throughout the years, there have been plenty of brothers to play for the program. For perhaps the first time ever, there are identical twins on the team. Eli Mostert, Will Mostert. Now, it's not common for twins to play Division I sports, let alone for the same team, which could lead to some confusion. How often do you guys get confused for each other? A lot, every day. Nobody really knows right now. It'll take them Besides probably a year. Very few people. Our parents sometimes get us messed yeah. up. But it's very tough. Honestly, I don't know how people do it. I don't really know how but I don't really look at myself, so. Yeah, usually it's guess, and it's 50-50, so you know, it's good odds. Will is the older one. By how long? 13 minutes. And how often do you let him know that? Um, decent amount. Decent, like, a few times a month. The brothers combined for a rarity in sports. In the Western Illinois game, Will was credited with causing a fumble, and Eli jumped on the loose ball. There is a little difference now between the two. After working with Coach Kramer, Eli has put on about 10 more pounds than Will. Well, I'm playing good tackle, gut. so they need to make me gain weight. I came in at 253, and now I'm up to 260. Both brothers tell us it's great to have someone they know to talk to at the end of a tough day. And it's even better when you really are family. For the Bison Football Show, I'm Alex Egan. It's fun to have those guys in the program. Well, Kobe Johnson is from Georgia, but he is not the only Georgia boy in this true freshman class. 
Dom Jones is a long-looking defensive back, and he is doing some nice things on scout team. The future crop of bison, presented by Peterson Farms Seed. Jones is from Duluth, Georgia, and with that 6-2 frame, Jim Cramer is licking his chops to chisel him up. He says in his area of Georgia, the FCS is not a thing. It's all about the FBS, but it didn't take him long to learn about the bison. Being from down south, you don't really hear much about like northern schools and really like, all down south is just FBS, not really FCS. So when Coach Buddha came attached to me and he just saw the idea of about FCS football and like the impact that they had for this entire run. So kind of impacted my, my decision. Dom Jones is long and lean. I think he has a nice future uh, with the program. Of course, Kobe Johnson having a great true freshman year exceeded the four game rule. Georgia has been very good to the Bison in the recruiting process. I think we'll see more of that moving forward for the Bison football program. Well, we know who the opponent is. It's Nichols. Nichols is coming to the Dome for the second round of the playoffs. We'll wrap up the show and take one more look at the Nichols Colonels. Stay with us. So Central Arkansas was the seeded Southland team, despite the fact they lost to Nichols 34-14. They also lost to Southeast Louisiana 34 to nothing. So Nichols is up first, even though Central Arkansas is in the same pod as the Bison. Nichols is a good football team. Uh, certainly Nichols is the back-to-back -back Southland Conference champions, 2.30 Central kickoff. Nichols at North Dakota State, the second round of the FCS playoffs. Nichols has a good running game, a senior quarterback. They're a veteran team, a well-coached team. Get excited, everybody. This is going to be a fun, fun matchup, no doubt about it. Nichols is the e conference champion, so you certainly uh, have to give them kudos for that. And Sully Lesh, number 55 on defense, he's one to watch. For sure, he's one of the top defensive players uh, in the nation. The Bison Radio Network will be fired up. It's ESPN3. College Extra is involved as well on the direct TV side, on the TV side. But uh, we'll have all the coverage for you next Sunday here on the Bison Football TV Show. Enjoy the playoffs, everybody. The Bison are undefeated. It's going to be a fun week.